Hey, what's up, everyone? This is David Greenspan, and you are listening to an all-new Season 3 of the Mindshare Podcast, a proud member of the Industry Syndicate Media Network. Additional podcasts are available at Mindshare101.com and on all the major podcast platforms. This week's episode is sponsored by the Buzz Conference and Kits Keep in Touch Systems. Make sure you connect with the Buzz Conference by visiting their website, www.thebuzzconference.com, or by following them on Instagram, at The Buzz Conference, to keep tabs on all the awesome events they are always hosting. And Kits, Kits offers a fully loaded cross-channel marketing suite for the real estate industry, including tools to help you manage your business, build Mindshare, and drive even more sales. You can learn more on my site, Mindshare101.com, by clicking on Marketing. And as you know, we are on a push to 100 reviews on iTunes, and so I would like to ask you, if you haven't yet, please take two minutes, go to iTunes, rate the show, leave a review... It really is that easy, and let me say thank you in advance. Today's episode is number 137. He became a realtor in the fall of 2004 after trying his hand in the computer technology world. A natural introvert, he now regularly ranks in the top 1% for Century 21 Canada Realtors. Always having a love for innovation, he noticed a lack of technology focus in real estate and quickly made his mark by learning and experimenting with different tech solutions in order to increase time and productivity. Not only does this help his overall client experience, it also allows him to spend more time with family and pursuing his love of travel. Utilizing technology in his everyday business, social media was a natural progression for him. This has allowed him to accelerate his success by generating quality leads through digital marketing platforms, as well as creating an authentic connection with the people in the Lloyd Minster region where he focuses much of his business. His love for real estate and technology has led him to want to help others succeed as well using social media, and his YouTube channel acts as a strong resource for exactly that, www.youtube.com forward slash Sean Bell. In the midst of launching his brand new course, this week on the show, I am joined by Sean Bell. Sean, welcome to the Mindshare Podcast. Hey, David. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry. I was just... uh... Just writing a review there for your uh, podcast on uh, on iTunes and getting subscribed. So, oh, perfect! So you've already done that. Do the same. Well done. Okay. So, hey, man, it was it was great to have you on the show. Thank you very much for coming out, and uh, you know, appreciate the uh, the review. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Great job. Uh, you know, <laughs> while we work. have you here, we may as well get into a little bit of content. I know you got some wicked stuff to share for everybody. Absolutely. So it's good, man. But uh, I got to ask you something. I was looking and reading through the bio, and uh, it said introvert yet your instagram hardly pegs you as that um how did you step out of your comfort zone and and literally like how do you get past the worry of what other people may think it wasn't easy it was tough when i first actually when i first started real estate and i was coming into the business um there was family that was in the business already and and i kind of wanted to join and kind of the the feedback I got was you may want to rethink this industry because you're going to get eaten alive because they knew kind of who I was. I just, I'm not, I'm still kind of that way in, in group settings. I'm not the one to go up and, and start a conversation. I'm more of a shy type person. And I really had to break out of my shell getting into real estate. Cause as you know, I mean, as realtors, we're, we got to get out there. We got to shake hands, kiss babies and do all that stuff. And it just was, did not come natural to me. And that's kind of what, why saved away me into social media, which was so awesome is I love social media. And then we got into the fear of video. I couldn't do video. I put a camera in front of me and I would freeze. My heart would race. My palms were sweaty and I just couldn't do it. I knew it was something I had to do. And it was something that was going to be more the norm going forward. And I knew that. So I just started practicing and I kind of related to, I mean, you hear a lot of people say, the main one being like Gary V saying, I mean, we didn't learn how to, we didn't know how to drive. We didn't know how to walk when we were born. It's just this takes practice. So when you see somebody and you see they're doing good, you're like, oh man, well, they must have been born with that or they grew up with it. It's like, no, they still practice and it took them time. And that's what it 
kind of once I got that in my head, I was like, okay, I guess I got to practice this. So I started by sending videos to my wife instead of a text message saying, hey, I'm just coming home now. And she would critique me. God love her. She would say like, uh, that doesn't sound like you. You sound like a robot, you know, kind of be better. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so then I keep practicing more and more. And then eventually I fell into the Instagram world and that's where things kind of took off for me. Because uh, if anybody's done stories on Instagram, that's where I got a ton of practice and eventually got comfortable enough. And it took years. So don't think this happens overnight. Eventually now it's just, now I love being in front of the camera. Like I actually enjoy it. It's fun for me. And it's something I love to do. But yeah, if you would have asked me that, I don't know how many years ago. Yeah, it, it was, it, I get it for a lot of you. It was very, very scary. And uh, yeah, so I still consider myself an introvert just because I'm, I mean, I'm, I like my alone time. Um, so some days, you know, as you're being a realtor, it's, it takes a lot out of you and it's kind of nice to unwind in the evenings, but um, yeah, it's just, it's practice. It, it took a lot of time. You know, I love that. Um, we talk about that. Uh, there's a, uh, one of the presentations that I do, we talk a lot about consistency and I, I kind of poke back and poke fun or maybe, you know, uh, discount or argue what Mr. Albert Einstein said about, you know, insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting different results. Um, so I want to use yeah. that as a jumping off point for just a second here to say that, you know, consistency and, and practice of doing the same thing over and over again will, in fact, achieve different <laughs> results. Right? And, and exactly. that's, that's exactly it. I don't think people are insane when they do that. In fact, I think that that's exactly where it comes from is, you know, you sort of recognize this fear. And I love what you said there. And I think that for everybody better take a, a, a page out of that book right there about the tip. But leverage your spouse, leverage a friend, send a text message as a video, and then have them critique. I think it's a brilliant idea because it keeps you right within what we'd say your comfort zone, I guess, like not out of your comfort zone. It gives yeah, people but, the ability to actually, you know, look and see what's going on. Dude, I remember like when I first started doing stuff, I would have a camcorder set up at the back of the room when I was on stage and I would watch them back after the fact. And like, you can't take that stuff back. You are live with people. And now you watch it back. You're like, oh man. <laughs> But you know what? It, 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 it shows you like where you can become better, right? And I always, I always tell people the thing that worked best for me is when I start doing video is I just, I wouldn't watch it again. I just, I do the video and I would just post it and not worry about it because I guarantee your worst critique is yourself. Oh, Nobody listen, else I'll, really cares. I'll, I'll double down on that. You said stories. I think stories are the best place people can practice. A text message was great. Stories are amazing. Stories, you can take them down right away. There's a lot of flexibility to them. They don't last very long, um, but I'm with you wholeheartedly. I do not go back and watch like presentations. I try to learn what, what can I do better, right? Because that's, that's, that's a core of what we do. Um, when it comes to stories and that type of thing, forget it, man. Record it, post it, keep moving. Yeah. Right? And, I, and often when I'm doing my stories and even as... I'm talking right now, I fumble on my words and, and they're not perfect. And I got to get my thoughts together to think about what I'm going to say. And that happens on my stories. And I used to be years ago, I thought it had to be polished. And I'd be like, Oh, nope, that's not good. Re-record. And now no matter what I say, I just post it. I don't care because that's my authentic self. That's who I am. And then that's how people get to know who I am. Cause I'm being the real me and I'm not being fake trying to be somebody else. There's the thing. I mean, we keep talking about authenticity and value add and being who you are and being comfortable with who you are. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Just continue to go, continue to let yourself trip over. And like, there's, there's the natural you as well, right? When you sort of trip over yourself and kind of correct, people realize like, it's not that polished. He's a real guy. So, so, you know, as we talk yeah. about that and we know that real estate is a uh, business of, you know, personal connections and, and, you're posting content on a regular basis. I mean, I, I see it all the time. Um, tell us this. What are your daily actions that are helping you create connections with others? So not just, let's say, the social aspect of things, but you're a top producing realtor. You've been achieving you know, top 1% with C21 Canada for a long time. Um, what are some of those things that you're doing? Because I, I, you know, as much as I, I, I want to dive into the social thing with you today, I really want people to get the get the yeah. the, the bread and butter of that um, meat and potatoes, whatever you want to call it. But there's more than just social media. And For it, sure, it takes more than just social media. What are some of the other things you're doing? 
for me, I found the biggest thing that worked for me. And I found there was a huge gap in the industry. My number one biggest thing was just being available. And that was it. That, that was, it was just as simple as that. This is glued to us all day long as realtors. It is so easy when somebody messages me just to give them a reply. And that's all I have to do. I, when I first started the business, I, that was back in 2004, I got a lot of business because I was uh, back then, 2004, I can't remember. I must have had maybe my first one was a Blackberry or something yeah, yeah, like probably, that. Yeah, probably, right? <laughs> maybe still a Motorola and, flip phone. <laughs> it's absolutely. And, and I would get an inquiry for one of my listings and I would reply apply to the people immediately. And they were always blown away. They'd be like, wow, you got back to me right away. I emailed five realtors and it's still been a day and I haven't heard back from them. And that's kind of like a light bulb went off my head. And I was like, huh, that was so easy. Why don't I just keep doing it? And even to still to this day, that's how I do get a lot of business is because I'm the first one to reply. And now my customers know if I'm going to message Sean, he's going to get back to me right away. So that when they go to refer their friends and family, they're like, hey, you got to use Sean because guess what? He's always available. We can always get a hold of him. No matter where he is, he's, you know, he actually cares and is trying to get back to us. And I mean, there's other little aspects with being organized, having a CRM, you know, getting in touch with people you haven't talked to in a while. There's all that stuff. But if I could say my number one thing, it's always and the, and the biggest review I get for positivity is always availability. You know, see, it's uh, so that's that's got to put a time crunch on the way you operate in your day because if you're going to be quick to reply, you're almost at that point where you're you're, um, I guess, so readily available that if there's a moment where you're in the midst of doing one thing, you know, do you just put that down and go and reply, or do you you know kind of finish what you're doing? Like, are you very rigid with your time scheduling or no? Uh, no, somewhat. I've got kind of a, a schedule. I follow first thing in the morning with my CRM where I'm sending bomb bomb videos to customers and letting them how many know how many views they've had on their property. And I kind of do those updates because I formed a team in the last year where now I'm just a listing specialist. And I've got, got somebody else. I, I do all our listings. I do our social media. Somebody else is the buyer specialist. So it's kind of freed up more time for me to do more of that stuff. And yeah, if I'm Obviously, if I'm in a one-to-one -one conversation with the customer, that message may have to sit for a bit because, I mean, I'm not going to be rude and pull up my phone in front of a when we're having a conversation and, and reply to a message. Um, but yeah, once that conversation's done, I pick up my phone, I reply to the messages right away. You know, I may apologize to the person and lots of times I have them like, sorry, I was in a meeting, didn't get back to you right away. And it was maybe 20 minutes later and they're like, oh, wow, like, I mean, 20 minutes, they're still <laughs> it's all so good, quick man. and you're yeah. apologizing. So yeah, but most of the time, uh, because of the way I've got my schedule set, uh, I'm in front of my computer a lot or I'm out creating social media. And if I'm doing that stuff and I don't have another person in front of me, well, I can quickly stop what I'm doing, reply to that message and, and continue on. So yeah, there's a lot of distractions in a day that do come up, but that's the beauty of being a realtor and, and why we love being a realtor. We're kind of our own boss and we, we kind of do, we're a different breed. So uh, where is most of your business coming from then? Is it coming from people you know, or is it coming from people you don't know? Most of my business would be referral based now since I've been in the business, what are we, 17 and a half years or coming up 18 years, whatever it is. Um, yeah, most of it would be referrals. So it's, uh, people, you know, recommended me to others. And then we do get quite a bit, uh, also now through our social media, we get a lot of people that say, Hey, we saw your social media. We like what you're doing. We like you. You're doing things different than anybody else. And, and we want you to represent us. And we just, we watch you online and we like who you are and your personality. And we relate to you. We want you to be our realtor. So that would be the two main ones for sure. Okay, so let let let's let's jump into that now, right? Because you know the realtor's blueprint, the realtor's blueprint to never ending social media leads. Um, Sean, yes, I am a realtor. I want to generate more leads on social media. What do I do? Basically, with social media is being like we kind of touched on before is being your authentic self. So you're showing who you are through your day to day. You're providing value to your customer and you're just giving them good advice. 
years ago when I started real estate, it was like we were the beholder of the information. You'd put like an ad in the newspaper and you'd have one photo and somebody would have to contact you and say, hey, I want more information on this. And that was your lead. Now it's kind of the reverse opposite where we're giving all the information up front. And because you're giving such good information, the people are like, I respect that. Uh, I like this person because they're giving me all this good, valuable content. Because of that, I want to go deal with them. So we're, you know, we're putting stuff on our social media. We've kind of got a schedule laid out. Where we've got a calendar for the next year to say, okay, this month we're focusing on this, this month we're focusing on this. And then it's broken down each day to say what we're going to post. And we do a lot of community minded stuff. So where I'm doing profiles of different communities or different neighborhoods in our community, different parks restaurants, schools. And then the other thing that I find works well is doing collaborations. So I do a ton of collaborations with somebody with every day of the week. Um, sorry, not every day of the week, Thursdays. Every Thursday we do a, we call it Go Shop Local. So it's where we're encouraging people to shop local. We're collaborating with other local businesses. And basically, people are love to do it because we're spotlighting them. We're, we're showcasing their business. And the thing that works great with collaborations, as David would know, as me and him are kind of doing one right now, is when you do a collaboration, people are going to share it because they, you're profiling them, they want to share it. And when they share it, that opens you up to a broader audience because you're getting put in front of their audience now. And that's why I'm a huge fan of collaborations because it's kind of community minded as well. You're helping out the community, that business owner. I don't, I, I've made so many connections with new business owners. And then sometimes after I do that interview, they're maybe a couple of weeks later and they're like, Hey, by the way, my husband and I, or my wife and I, we've been thinking about, you know, maybe switching things up. And uh, what's your thoughts on this? I was top of mind because I did the interview with them. And then I, sometimes I have people come to me and say, Hey, we, we saw we, this. We, 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 we say that you built Mindshare. Absolutely. Yes, Mindshare. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I am, I am, I am mindshare there. Building mindshare. mindshare. You got this building mindshare. No, it's good. So, so Sean, tell me this though, when, when it comes to content, right? Like, I mean, you say that you've laid out a year worth of content. Yeah. We've got a general idea of, of our year. So it's broken down into basic themes and then we kind of know, so is it 12 and I themes? cover that. In, in, yeah. That kind of? Yeah. So we know in December we're hitting Christmas hard. So yeah. Christmas, it's very heavy in December with Christmas, and we're going to have a bunch of uh, things scheduled throughout our, our weeks that are more Christmas focused for okay. that month. Um, July, which we're in right now, we kind of had our theme as cabin season. So where okay. we're doing more information about cabins and what people can expect when they're buying cabins. Is that the whole month? So we just kind of lay it out. That? Yeah, so every... Every uh, Monday, we've got that that cabin episode in there so that we've got something that week about cabin. And then another day is maybe something different. Um, but the main focus for that month is is kind of on, on cabin. So if we're talking about something else, we might say, oh, which relates to because we're doing cabin months in July. This kind of relates to cabins. Uh, um and yeah, we kind of just kind of tie up that all the time. Okay. So, so, so yeah, let's, it's a general idea of the year. Okay. So let's look at it like this then. So, so what you're doing is you're taking 12 months of the year. You're essentially kind of getting a theme for each month of the year. That theme will allow you to have a yeah. focus for, for particular content that goes out on specific days. Um, and then in order to actually try to generate these leads, you still haven't even talked about ads right now. All, and and there's not a bad thing. Um, but you've mentioned being authentic. You mentioned being yourself. Uh, we've talked about consistency. Uh, we've talked about uh, coming up with content, something to be saying. So are you aiming for about like one post a day? Is that kind of the idea? That's correct. Yeah, right now we do one post a day, Monday to Friday, and we take weekends off. But the okay. weekends are still having stories. Right. So stories, we want to have something on there every day with a story. So people are still able to follow along and see us. Okay. And uh, I know you're, you're, you're into video. Um, is more focus put on video or photos or both? Or to you, it doesn't matter. It's got to be a post that goes out. What's, what's your thought on that? Yeah. So most of the stuff we're doing with our team is more video orientated. So we're posting that on Instagram and Facebook. 
on my Instagram for my coaching side of things, I'm just doing more photos, but then we've got the uh, odd IGTV in there, which is a vid- long format video. And then my stories, of course, uh, pretty much most of my stories you watch, they're all video and uh, mm-hmm. not much of them are photos because it's just me trying to show what's going on behind the scenes and, and actually what's happening, whether it's, you know, I'm out listing a property or I'm playing ball or hockey with my kids and just showing what I'm doing throughout the day and what my life actually is. Okay. So there's a mix of a lot of the personal and the business. Are you more heavily focused on one side versus the other or to you? Is it just, let's get something up there? Yeah, just get to, basically I'm always at the office every, I mean, I get here early in the morning and I'm, you know, generally here till uh, about supper time. And then I head off to spend time with the family unless I have appointments in the evening for other things. So I just take it the way it is for my entire day. And so most of it would be business because I'm at the office during those times. But for sure, I still want to get the family stuff in there because again, people want to know the real you. Absolutely. I'm not just a realtor. I'm, I, I enjoy other things. I, I like to play hockey. I like to golf. I, I like to spend time with my kids, take them to the water park. Uh, we love to travel as a family. So when we travel, I'm even taking stories. Um, I, I've had people reach out to me and say, uh, we see you love to travel. We see you love food and you're always eating at the coolest places. <laughs> We're gonna. We're taking a trip here. What What do you think? Where should we go eat? Like they're not even asking me about real estate. They're asking me about where to go eat on their holiday. But guess what? They still thought of me and they remember me. And I, I was building mindshare. I like that, man. I like that. You know, I should start using that. That's good. But you know, realistically, that's what we call trusted advisor status. And any, um, you know, there's a lot of peaks and valleys in the sales cycle between you know one person and another person. And you could literally be just the hardcore salesperson uh, that they may buy from you. Uh, but all the way at the other end of the top of it all is what we call trusted advisor. And this is where, yeah, a client that trusts in you to help them buy and sell real estate may also call you and say, hey, Sean, we're going over to, you know, such a Lloyd Minster. Tell us, you know, where's the best place to grab a burger? And I know a lot of folks yeah. might sit back and go, don't bother me with that stuff. I haven't got time to answer you about burgers. But you built enough mind share, and again, no pun intended there, but you've built enough there that people are actually thinking about you and going, listen, we trust you. We just we want your advice. When you get there, yeah. they want to paint, you know, paint their walls or make their grass green, and they're thinking about you. You're now you're top of mind. Now you it's get more opportunity. It's another conversation. It's a, it's allowing you to have another conversation with that person and showing that you actually care. I, another uh, thing I can relate to or another story. Years ago, I had. I think it was on my webpage. I can't remember where they found it, but this person called me and said, we want you to help us buy a house because I see you're an avid golfer. And that was it. That was what did it. He's a golfer too. You got that because you were sharing. You were sharing the fact that you golfed. Absolutely. Yeah. And he, he wanted somebody with a similar interest. And he said, because I see you like to golf, I want you to be my realtor. And it was, that was, that's all it was. I mean, just something as simple as that. It could be, you may share a post online of you with your cat or your dog and somebody else might be an animal lover and, or have the same cat or dog you have and be like, I want you to be my realtor. I mean, it's, it sounds strange, but sometimes it's just that simple. Well, well, okay, but with the, you know, in this whole way, we're talking about this this blueprint to generate more leads, right? So again, it's it's you know, so first of all, step out of your comfort zone, right? Like as we talked about the introvert to the extrovert, like even if you are introverted, step out of your comfort zone. There's ways to practice that to make sure that you can get better at it. Um, the second step there is yep. yes, go ahead and create content. Um, it's easy for you and I to sit here and say post, uh, but there's a lot of folks that might go, well, post what, and they might say, well, I'm not interesting enough, or I don't have enough value, or I'm not worthy enough to put something out there. And we're literally saying here, no, 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 you, you, you are. And I want everybody to understand that you are, and that you, you do have something interesting to say. It's just a matter of digging in and finding out what is it now in our momentum training series, which is our our group training stuff that we do. We break down like an entire content strategy of how to come up with content and how to do it all. But you know, in in a nutshell for everybody, really what you're thinking about, as Sean just said, was, you know, what are the things that you like to do? Uh, Sean likes to travel. He likes to eat. He's going to talk about, you know, these places, these cool places that he eats. He's going to talk about these cool places that he travels, these, these things that he does with his kids. And it's all about him, right? So, so for you listening and watching right now, you know, think to yourself, what about you? 
What is it about you that if you looked in a mirror and said, well, these are my, my top five things that I enjoy. And then if you went and asked, you know, your spouse, you asked your, your best friend or whoever, Hey, what do you, what do you, what do you see from me? Right. Cause I, I would imagine that many people that if you're following on social, you, you're going to know, I, I, I love my baseball. I love my hockey. I love my Harleys. I love my family. And I love what I do for a living. Right. And th- those are kind of my five Absolutely. pillars. So what are your, what are your pillars? And that's kind of a generalized question, everybody. But so Sean, we've now sort of stepped out of our comfort zone. Um, we're coming up with content. Uh, we're posting content. You're sort of going, Hey, go at least once a day kind of thing, five days a week, but always be active with stories. I like it. Um, Outside of just posting content, what else are you doing then to really take advantage of the social media platforms that you are constantly, you know, making stuff happen? Because you and I know it and many people listening know it. It's not just about posting the content. For sure. Yeah, you you could post uh, you could post a ton of content and have a, nobody seeing it. I mean, there's different tricks and, and we cover that in, in our program is. I mean, there's different things you got to do with putting, you know, correct hashtags on your posts and tagging people and tagging your location, doing different stuff like that. But then aside from that, a big thing that I do talk about in the course as well is social media is called the, I mean, it's two words. The very first word is an important one that we forget and it's social. It's called social media for a reason. So you got to be social on there. So we teach that in there saying you got to find other accounts. You got to interact with them have conversations. It's just like, I kind of look at social media almost like a, like a conference. Like when you go to a conference and it's like, you could just sit in the corner, which is what I did a lot because <laughs> I'm an introvert. You could sit in the corner and speak to nobody and nobody would ever even know you were there. You didn't meet anybody. Social media is the same way. You can just sit back, do nothing and nobody will find you. But if you get out there and actually digitally shake hands and digitally kiss babies. Well, then all of a sudden now people are starting to find you. They're getting to know about you. And now they're more, they're aware about you. And um, you just, if you can carry those conversations, have meaningful conversations, they're going to eventually follow your page. They're going to interact with you, become fans of yours. And that's where you kind of, that snowballs and you build that audience. And and it's something you got to be consistent with. That's on all my YouTube videos that I, I uh, put out there, that's the number one thing that I'm a fan of that, that I say how anybody can grow their business is consistency. If you're not consistent, everything will fall apart. So everything I've even done for the past, gosh, I don't, I don't know how long it's been on social media, how many years, if I stop today, it's just going to stop. Like yeah. you got to keep putting the content out there and keep having those conversations with people. Otherwise they're going to forget about you. Oh, yeah. And again, I I can never say it enough. Consistency is a magic ingredient to achieving everything we want in life. Right. And that's really what it comes down to. And, and the other thing about consistency too, the beauty of it is that, you know, the more consistent you are, and this goes back to the introvert versus extrovert and getting used to video is that the more consistent that you are and the more you, uh, you learn along the way, the better you get, therefore the more confidence you build. And now all of a sudden that consistency becomes a lot easier because you got the confidence in what you're saying and who you are and how you execute. And now the execution becomes a lot easier. And now, yes, you're not the stalker who's just scrolling on social media, but you're actually somebody that people are like, hey, I see that he or she is putting content out there. I've seen it before. I seem to like it. I'm going to engage with that person. Much the same when I see somebody engaging with me, I want to do my best to reciprocate because as we said, it's social media. It's not business media. Even though we're trying to exploit it for business, the idea is you've got to be social with people. So, yeah. you know, what, what are, are, are you, do you have like a, a, a certain amount of people that you want to connect with every single day while you're on the social media platform to say like, this is how many people I'm going to try to reach out to? Yeah. And in an ideal world, I mean, it's again with... I- I, I get it with us as realtors, our schedules are all over the place. But uh, I mean, sometimes I've just got a, a quiet corner of my office here. I may sit down for half an hour a day and just go through different things where I'm l- looking at different hashtags and interacting with new people and liking their posts and commenting and just doing that to kind of grow a following. And, and I just basically search for hashtags in my local area that are relevant to my city and just start having more conversations and again, meeting more people on social media and reaching out to other businesses to do interviews. 
um, yeah, so I'm always talking to people on social media so they can make new connections. Okay, so hold on. I like that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people going, wait, 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 what? And I, I, I get it, but I just want to reiterate this. So you'll go to Instagram. Yeah. You'll go into the search field and type. Yeah, so if anybody... He's uh, wondering, you click on that little magnifying glass that's on the bottom of your Instagram, click on that, and it gives you what David's talking about. It gives you that search bar, and you can tap in that search bar and, and search for anything. So the easiest way to start is just search your city name. So if you search, say you're in Toronto, you search Toronto, all of a sudden Instagram is going to give you a bunch of suggestions under that. It might say Toronto's the number one. The next one might be Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Toronto City Hall, like it'll give you a bunch of different suggestions and you can click on those hashtags and it'll show you when you first click on it, it's going to show you the top posts. So that's the ones that got the most traction. But if you click on to the right of it, there's one that says recent that gives you all the recent posts. And that's where I would like you to go because that shows the people that have just made those posts. So you know that they're still active on Instagram because they just made the post. And now that's the time when you can go like their stuff, comment on their stuff. I mean, don't just be generic. Like actually, you know, if they have something in their posts that you can speak to, maybe they've got a, a, a couple kids in their posts and they're having fun at the park. You can write on there and be like, oh, which park are you at? I haven't been to that park. It looks so cool. Like actually have a, a regular conversation with them. So you'll go and in. Basically, uh, from there, yeah, it's just. Sorry, go say, ahead. sorry. No, I was going to say, finish that thought. Sorry. I just say from there. Yeah. It's just basically then they reply back and you have conversations back and forth with them. And then that gets, uh, we can continue on that and down differ. Cause that builds into something else for, for Instagram that, that helps you as well. Right. Uh, can we share that or no? Yeah, for sure. So basically the way Instagram works is it, if it thinks that you are really interested in somebody and your so-called friends, it's going to show your content to them more. So if I just reached out to David and I had a meaningful conversation with him and we had, you know, a bunch of texts going back and forth on Instagram, next time he goes to his main feed on Instagram, there's a good chance he's going to see my recent post. It's going to pop up. So when you go to Instagram and it shows you the feed, my post might be right at the top of his feed. Not only that, but at the top, there's little circles, which are stories. I'm probably going to be near the start for the story. So if David goes to look at his stories the next day or, or at the same time, there's a good chance he's going to see my story. And therefore, because if I'm having more conversations with more people, now I've got more eyeballs looking at my content. And it's I've done the, the trial and error of it all. I spent years on it and I can tell you, I've actually tried it where I won't talk to anybody on Instagram for a week and then I'll do stories and I can see my story views are here. All of a sudden I start talking to people and my next story I do is way up here. So yeah. it, it definitely works and that's how the algorithm works. And that's, that's the big deal is the algorithm right there is that uh, the, you know, the engagement there um, it's telling Instagram that you are engaging and telling Instagram you're not just putting up content, but you are actually talking. And Facebook works a very similar way that way, right? Uh, much the same. Absolutely. I love the fact that you brought up the stories. And I'll say that, you know, in my mind, uh, and I, I mean, I don't just believe this. I, I, I live it. But, you know, stories are one of the best mindshare hacks there are. Because when you think about it, um, the minute I open up Instagram, if you're somebody that I click on a lot, you're always, I mean, for the most part, as long as you're active as well, you're always going to be at the top of my feed, right? For free. Like every time I open up Instagram, there's you right next to like the Instagram logo, right? <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Yep. And all that really takes is just being consistent with your efforts, right? So, and it doesn't cost you any money. Well, that, and that's the beauty. It doesn't cost you money. It's a little bit of time. But again, if you're going to be on social media, instead of stalking people, act with purpose, right? So, you know, we're, we're, we're stepping out of our comfort zone. We're coming up with content. We're starting to engage with other people. We are posting a little bit more consistently. Um, you know, things are starting to happen. My, my, my following is growing. Uh, I am, you know, garnering, uh, getting more conversations with people, you know, Sean, how do we, when we talk about generating never-ending social media leads, would you say for the first part of what we're talking about here, just the fact that we've got eyeballs, we've got, you know, people engaging, we, uh, you know, people having conversations, 
Are we considering those part of this, this never ending lead? Yeah. Or so the lead be somebody who was like, Sean, I've been following you like crazy. And now I want to know about real estate. Like they got to specifically say something. They got to specifically fill out a specific form. What are you defining as a lead when we talk about this? Yeah. So there's, there's, yeah, gr- great question. So there's two different avenues to leads. There's the organic route and there's the paid route. So mm-hmm. everything David and I've been talking up to now is the organic route. And those are the best leads you'll ever get. Those, I love those leads because they already know you. They like you, they trust you. And I mean, you could do anything and they're, they're going to go every step of the way with you and, and they trust you. Now, for those that want leads immediately, that they just, they're the type where it's like, hey, I just want to get on the phone or, or text people. I want to start trying to convert people. That's where the paid approach comes in with the Facebook ads. And with those, the way they're working is you're putting out a certain list of homes for people. People they have to put in their name, their number, their email address in order to get that list. So once they get that list, their number goes to you. And then from there, you've got that lead that you can start. So you may run an ad and you may get 20 to 40 leads. Now you've got all those names and as realtors, anybody that knows lead generation, you're, it's kind of like a funnel. You're trying to get this many leads so that you can try to get a hold of this many people so that eventually you've got this many people that want to actually buy or sell through you. So it's all a numbers game on that side of things. And it's just giving you, yeah, if you have Facebook ads set up, you'll have leads coming in all the time guaranteed. You'll never have to, to fight for another lead again. They'll just be coming in the way we have our system set up automatically. So how, how, how much are people spending a day, a week, a month on Facebook leads? Uh, a lot of people in, in our, in order to do kind of what you're saying, we're like, you're getting, you know, a quality flow and are these quality yeah. leads, yeah. Sean? So some are and some aren't. Okay. So yes, definitely you'll get some where they may be a fake name, fake number. Um, but that happens with any of that lead generation stuff. Most of the the group that I'm teaching, we usually start at 50 bucks a week just to test it out and see how things are going and, and kind of test different ads. And mm-hmm. when you find the ad that works really good, well, then maybe you double down on it. If And if you're spending 50 bucks and it's like, hey, I got this many leads. Yeah, this is perfect for me. Or maybe, hey, you know what? I could, I could take on more of this. Like I could, this is kind of fun. I could do more of this. Well, then you double your budget. You set it up to a hundred bucks so that that's the beauty with it is you can kind of Scale. control how much leads you have coming in. And you can, if you want to take the next two weeks off and you're going on holidays, stop the ad. So you don't, you don't have those ads coming in. So it's kind of nice. You're not at the mercy of a lead generation company where you got to keep paying monthly all the time and they give you leads. And then if you stop paying those, those stop. Uh, with, with Facebook, you're kind of in control. It's like, well, this week I want to, I want leads two weeks from now. I don't. And then another three weeks from now, now I want leads again. Like you can kind of turn it on and off, which is awesome. In my opinion, you're just in complete control. So in terms of the, um, in terms of the time involved, like, uh, you know, you get a lead. Okay. We got a lead. Got to convert the lead. So, so what kind of, first of all, I mean, um, I guess, how long does it typically take from what your experience is uh, to kind of generate it, to convert it? And then much the same, what are we doing to convert it? What pieces are there? Because we we hear so often, right? Uh, yeah, you could generate leads and you can sign up to like a company ABC that, you know, you'll spend a whole bunch of money with and they'll just deliver you leads, whether they're good or bad, left to be seen. Right. Um, and there's a lot of companies out there and they do nice jobs. Uh, that being said, though, you know, when we spend that money, we, you know, we'd like to, we, we would like to see immediate return. You and I, yeah. and most people know you're not going to see immediate return. And we don't really see that much in life about anything unless it's like Amazon or something. Um, but outside of that, what is the kind of time frame that it's going to take to, to kind of, you know, generate to convert? And then what are we doing to actually convert? Because most people don't talk about that part. For sure. Yeah. The leads, they come in right away. I mean, I could set up an ad today and I'd have leads coming in today. So that's, the, that's pretty quick from there. It just, it's, if you can find that right ad that performs well in your community and speaks to something that people really want, then you're going to have a lot higher chance of converting them. Uh, the example I use is, I mean, we've been uh, since 2014, the end of 2014, our market, 
market has been a recessed market. We've been in uh, downhill and we had, sadly, we had far too many foreclosures. We had a lot of them. We saw a lot of, uh, a, there was a lot of sad stories anyway. So we ran an ad because I kept getting calls from people saying, do you have foreclosures? Like everybody, every time somebody hears the word foreclosure, they think of a deal. So I kind of saw that as like, there's a lot of people out there that want foreclosures and they keep calling about saying, do you have a list of foreclosures somewhere? How do we find foreclosures? What, where do we got to go? So I was like, Hmm, that's interesting. So I ran an ad and I said, here's, and I took all the foreclosures we had at that time in the city. I put them into a document and I ran an ad saying, click here for a list of homes um, that have recently foreclosed on of foreclosed homes. We had, I have to check the exact number, but I think it was 263 or 236 leads in that week's time, which is like unheard of. So and a lot of those leads, they actually responded to us because it was something that they actually wanted. We weren't just putting out a bogus you know, if you try to put out those those ads that maybe aren't genuine, or if I had posted this ad and there was only one foreclosure, I might have had a lot of ticked off people at me. Mm. So you want to make sure you actually have something of value. And because we had a good list and it was something people are really looking for, a lot of times I'd reach out to them and it was only one or two times they'd actually get back to me and be like, yeah, you know what? We're looking for an investment property. If you see something, keep us on your list. Let us know. So that one was was kind of out of the ordinary, but on average, I would say if you're just running a regular ad, you know, it may take you, they say, I've, I've looked this up quite a bit. The stats is like, it's seven to nine. They call it touches with a contact before they'll actually get back to you. So, and as, us as realtors, and I was co completely guilty of it as well. We'll try one or two times and we'll be like, okay, they're not interested. And then we just stop. But as I learned that stat and kept contacting people thinking, cause I don't, I myself, I don't like pushy salespeople. Yeah. So that's, I tried to model my business that I'm not going to be a pushy person. And this kind of came off as pushy to me. It was, it was getting out of my comfort zone, but I just, I tried different things instead of being pushy, like, Hey, you want to buy a house? It was more like just updating you on the market. Just wanted to let you know, here's what's going on and, mm -hmm. and kind of send more stuff like that to them, mixing up between emails and text messages. All of a sudden, sometimes it was like on that seventh, eighth, or ninth time, they'd respond to me and you'd get the you'd see the email come in, you'd be like, oh my God, now they're now they're gonna be mad at me because I've sent them so many messages. But they'd actually reply back apologizing, being like, sorry, I haven't had a chance to get back to you yet. Yes, we are interested. Thank you for keeping in touch. We're glad you didn't forget about us. And then I was like, whoa, okay, this actually works. So you need most of the realtors out there. That's where you'd have the advantage is if you keep contacting the people, most others will not do that and, and you'll win over before they will because you're going to actually get the lead. I couldn't agree with you more. We hear it all the time. Public enemy number one is that there is not enough follow up. So it's, uh, you know, let that be, I guess, a reminder to everybody that's tuned into this one is that uh, you suck at follow up. And if you're sitting there going, no, I don't, Dave, well, then good on you. Big high five from me. But if you are saying, oh, man, he's right. Well, you better step it up, because if you don't, somebody else is going to just a word to the wise. Um, now, yeah, you, when can, we you can generate these leads, but if you don't follow up, it's it's. To, to be honest, it's going to be a waste of money for you. Okay. Absolutely, man. Great point, right? So here, in terms of follow-up, in terms of, you know, how we build Mindshare, big question that comes up often is, well, how do I follow up? Um, you've mentioned that you leverage the phone and that your your speed to call it speed to lead is is real quick, but that's also not just for new leads. That's for existing clientele. And I just, I love it. Um, but you use the phone, uh, you use social media. You know, if we're going to talk about follow-up, what would be the follow-up process I might take if I got a brand new lead in today? So I generated it, whether I generated from a paid ad or I listened to the steps you gave me for, for organic, right? To just be organic on social. What would I do now? I got a new lead. Uh, where am I going? My biggest thing is I like to, for the leads that I like to do, text and email are, are for mine. Okay. Um, I find a lot of people... How do I quit this? I like to have like-minded people dealing with me. And if I'm dealing with like-minded people, I know that I'm the type where you get a phone call now and you're like, oh, phone call. 
<laughs> it's, most people like text and text message and email. So I try to get back to them with that. If yeah. they want to call me, then absolutely. I, I will call them. Um, and then, I mean, you could even, um, I mean, if you want, you could just even find them on social media too. Don't be pushy about it, but just find them on social media. You may give them a follow or start liking some of their stuff, just kind of, so they're kind of remembering you as well. And then the other biggest thing I find is whether it's through Facebook ads or something else, however, a lead comes to you, reply to them in that same platform. So if they're messaging you on Facebook Messenger, reply to them there. If they send you an email, send them an email back. Don't send them a text message if they sent you an email. And I know that sounds weird, but people, people probability they they like uh, certainty. They like so if 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 emailing was comfortable for them, getting an email back is comfortable right for them. Or they may not be a text type person. Maybe you like text best, best, but if they're emailing you, then email them back. And that's when usually you get your best responses. If all of a sudden you call them, sometimes you kind of catch them off guard. And safe to be is to say that this is this is very much about a gut instinct as well. Um, in terms of like when is my next follow up? So I called them quickly today. They or they email me today. I emailed them back today. Um, I didn't get a response from them today. Uh, would you be going back to them again tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. And I always email, go back to by the phone. Next would you change the 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 channel at this point or no? Uh, generally, if they've got back to me, I'll respond to them probably once a day. Sometimes if I get a bit more, it might be every other day. And I just keep responding until I get a, a response. And it's more like, hey, did you get my message yesterday? I'm just just checking in, just making sure you got my message. Okay. So it's just kind of... Because I mean, sometimes things do happen where things get put in junk mail or or a message just gets lost. It does happen. Yeah. So that's why I kind of leave with that saying, just checking in, making sure you did get my message. Did you have any questions? And usually after some time, they'll get back to me. But if they send you the email today, you respond today, but then they don't respond to you. Tomorrow's Correct. message would still be by email. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So if they, sorry, so different question there. Yeah. If they send a submission, what we're doing is we're collecting their email and their phone number. So I'll do a mix then. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I like that. that. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes they may get an email and they don't like emails, but then the next day they get a text and then they might actually respond to it. Yeah. Right okay, away. cool. And, 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 and like from a time investment, um, you know, is this something where, you know, we know that there's obviously some scheduling going on for your social to make sure you execute. Um, it, I imagine that you're also scheduling a lot of the other stuff that's going on in a day, including follow-up. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And what I, what I did as years went on, if somebody really wants to up their lead generation game, as I got really busy and because what I was doing as I'm an owner of the company here, I wasn't keeping any of the leads for myself. I was giving them out to our realtors within the office. So if I was vetting them, I would, and I finally got a hold of somebody, I would send it off to somebody in our office as things got busier, we got more leads and I had other stuff going on with my business. We hired a company called Verse, Verse.io. They used to be called Agentology a, a year or two ago. And they're in the business of if you have a lead coming in, they'll actually contact them for you as a representative of your company and have a really strong follow-up, better than what I would have had, to be honest. And they do a heck of a good job about that. And then from there, when the leads are ready to go, they kind of send them off to you. So you can do it on your own. You can hire a company. There's a bunch of different avenues you can do. You can speak to David because I know he's kind of got some knowledge behind that as well. Um, so kind of just, yeah, go to whatever your strength is. If, if lead fall, if you want leads and follow-ups, not your thing, get, get the experts to help you out with that and, and play to your strength, do what you're good at. If you're good like at that. doing other things and do that. Talk, uh, tell me about cost quickly here. Like, I mean, again, when we're, when we're, we're talking about generating organic content, I'd say there's no cost except for time, which, which, which has a cost to it as well. Um, but let's go hard, hardcore dollars for a moment and say, how much money are you pulling out of your pocket, uh, ish on a monthly basis or, 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 or Sean, maybe not even you specifically, but in general, as you're coaching agents around this part of their world, what is that rule of thumb that we're saying, look, if you want to go down this road of generating leads, and it's not just through your organic efforts, and I, I'm pretty certain that even earlier on, you said, like, if the organic efforts aren't there, forget about the paid stuff, which is, is 
that's the mindset I'm in at least is if you're not, if you're not doing it organically, don't try doing it through paid because it's not going to have the same leverage. Um, however, if you are doing it organically properly and you do want to spend a few dollars on social media ads and, and generating leads, what kind of dollars should we be expecting in a month to spend on this project? Base, I would say, like I said, 50 bucks a week. So I'd expect to spend 200 bucks a month. And if somebody hits it hard enough, they could easily get uh, a sale a month out of that, if not more. It's just, they got to be disciplined with it and keep on top of it and keep uh, having a good, whether it's CRM or schedule, because as you get all these leads coming in, you got to have, okay, when did I talk to this person? When's the next time to talk to them? So when you're dealing with like 100 leads, you need to have a good system in place there to know when to contact the next one and what conversation maybe you had with them prior so that you're not uh, shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. And, and so to the 200 bucks, and this is, this is part of where I, I really try to hit home for, for everybody tuned in, you know, all the time is it's not just the $200 at this point, right? You've got the $200 that's going towards the ad spend. You've got some money that you've got to put towards your CRM, which could be 20 bucks a month. It could be a hundred bucks a month. It could be a thousand dollars a month. You could have a free system, whatever. You've got to, you got to put something towards that. Um, that system itself as well should have other marketing that's attached or other channels that are going to help you build Mindshare so that that follow-up that's happening is in play, that we are leveraging all seven ways to communicate with people. And even though they might have come in through an email and responded by email, at some point, you may just not connect with each other, but they're in the database. So now what's going on on a, call it monthly basis, just through consistency, that's going to continue to knock on their door and go, hey, I'm here. Here's some real estate information. Um, and that's, again, to me, where I say, you know, part of the budgeting to this is not just on your ad spend, but it's also uh, around the other uh, tools that you can have in place to support all of this and help you convert, yep. as well as your time investment, right? So just things for everybody to think about. Um, from a production standpoint, Sean, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, just just don't do this stuff because of the hassle. Um, you make it easy. and 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 and. So I guess you make it look easy, right? But what do people need to know about the equipment that they should have? Um, do, do they, you know, when you're doing video, especially, because you, you do some cool videos. And, and, and I mean, some of the stuff that I even look at sometimes like, how the hell did he make it all black and white? And then that one thing is blue, you know? And I know with like pictures, there's certain ways to do these, but, you know, video, you've taken it that way. Um, there's times where you're not, you're certainly not holding the camera. I can tell you're obviously not. You're further away, right? So what yeah. I want to know is, is uh, First, are we advising people they got to be fully loaded or can they just keep it simple? Um, and then just, again, as you're, and, and I'm going to tell everybody, like, check out his Instagram account, C21 Sean Bell. Uh, your, your account has some great pics, some great video. Is it hard to do by yourself? Like, do I need to have all these, these extra fancy schmancy? Like, I tell everybody, listen, me, my right arm and my smartphone. <laughs> and it makes it easy, man. And I've been consistent like crazy. But I start thinking about gimbals and yeah. gobos and God knows whatever else. I don't know. It's just to get like, yeah, okay, I'll just leave that to somebody else. What's your, <laughs> what, what's your advice yeah. to everybody yeah. for that? Just, just get started. Don't overthink the equipment and think you need all this and all that, because if you overthink it, you're just, you're never going to get started. And that's what I used to go through is like, oh, I need this and I need that. And I'm going to do this. And you know what? I'll to look at this the next day. And then it ended up, I never did it. If you just start, just like David said, with this is the best you can do. Start taking your own photos, start taking some video and just practice with it. And as you get comfortable with it and start to see things you could add on, then maybe add them on. So maybe you're doing this for a while and you're like, hey, you know what? It'd be kind of cool if I did this. What do I need to do that? Or how, how would I add on that? So uh, I actually have, uh, if you watch my Instagram long enough, I have a photographer that uh, does follow me around for our listings. I call him Photo Guy. That's what I've dubbed him. It just came up in our, our social media's Photo Guy. So now he's created his own Instagram that's called The Photo Guy, uh, just with his own Instagram page. Nice. So I get a lot of help through that because whenever we're at a property, um, we take a picture with me in the property to try to bring some more exposure to it because stats show if you have uh, a set of eyeballs in any post, you get far more traction than you do anything else. So when we're trying to bring attention to a property, we've got a picture of me in it and people stop 
And they'll be like, oh, somebody's in this. Do I know this person? And it kind of makes them scroll through the other photos. So that's, I mean, one tip anybody can use. It's really easy. And if you don't have a photographer, on, I'm going to get off camera for just a second. You can pick up something as easy as this at your local wherever, Best Buy or even Amazon. And all it is is a simple tripod. Your phone goes in here. You can have it uh, portrait style. You can have it landscape style. You can tilt it back and forth. And this is how I do a lot of my photos. Um, if anybody's seen my Instagram where I'm doing sold photos with customers, so kind of a different way I get, you know, a lot of people you see the sold photos where they're standing there and they're smiling. Well, we wanted to do something different. So we do it where we're jumping or we're, uh, you know, creating a story behind what's happening. And this is what I use. So I put my phone on here. I set it. I frame it how I want it. I set the timer on my phone for my camera, push it. I give it 10 seconds. We all get into frame, get into the pose that we want. And then the camera takes it. And then I don't, I don't have to have a photographer with me. And it's, I'm, I don't know how much I spent on that thing. It was like maybe 20, 30 bucks, 40 bucks. It was pretty cheap. And yeah, I take it everywhere with me because it's, uh, it's that set of hands that where it looks like somebody's taking a photo of you, but you're actually in the photo yourself. And, and, and for some of those photos that you take, uh, some great pics in there, like I said, uh, for some of those, are you, is there a lot of thought that's going in, in, in days ahead, or is this kind of something that comes on, it comes to you on a whim? Most of mine's on a whim. I'm okay, cool. kind of an unscripted type person. So, so I'm kind of like the day of I'm as sometimes this happens when I'm just driving there. I'm like, okay, what kind of photo could we do today? And, I kind of think about maybe the people that I sold to and cool. kind of more about who they are. And I'm like, Hmm, yeah, maybe we could do a photo around that. Like, Oh, they really, they have that dog. They really love their dog. Let's get the dog involved. Let's cool. do some photo with the dog. And then that's, that's kind of how it just all comes to my head. So it's just some fun uh, creativity. Yeah, you betcha. And then all I do when I, when I get there is I'm, I kind of always in my head, I've got, I can hear my photographer in my head talking, saying, Sean, put this straight, do the, make sure you frame it this way. I yeah. do little things like that, okay. but basically the main thing to make sure your, uh, your horizon is straight and that's not crooked. That, uh, the rule of thirds in photography to make sure that, uh, the people are either in kind of the top left or the top right. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's just, and again, when I would have took my first photo, it, <laughs> if I look back would be, way different than today Absolutely. and it's just i just practicing and doing more and learning i always tell people you can't don't compare your chapter one to somebody's chapter 20 i mean yeah, if, you can't. if you're just starting that's cool just start and you will get there and yeah and, 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 and then you'll be at chapter 20 while so many other people are still in chapter one or, or still thinking about starting chapter one so back to what sean said a few times today just get started now um talking about teaching people uh you've got a uh uh uh, you've just launched a course. I believe it's just launched. Um, am I right about that? Correct. Uh, and, uh, and you've got your YouTube channel. So I was hoping you could uh, take a moment here and we could just help you, you know, build some mindshare around both those. Um, tell everybody about your course and tell everybody about the YouTube channel. So the course, I had a course before it was all on Facebook ads. And what I did is that's still in the course, but now we've added to it. So now it's all social media in general. So how to generate leads through social, uh, both organically and paid. And I, I've got it written down here because I it was kind of a, a mouthful. So I wrote it down so I didn't forget. And I'm just going to read it here. So usually yeah. I'm not a script person, so I apologize. But this is what the course is about. Basically, I take realtors going from not knowing what to post on social media and no following to having a strategic social media plan generates an audience of high quality leads so that they can reduce stress and generate a never ending list of clients. So that's basically, that's it in a nutshell. Um, and then also I do give a lot of uh, free advice, call it on uh, my YouTube channel, which if you go there right now, you're going to be like, what the heck? He hasn't created a video in two months, new video coming next week. I'm back in the saddle again. And the reason there was that pause was because I was doing the huge revamp of this course. It took a lot of hours to revamp and, and get it where I want it. And now that it's ready to go, I'll uh, start putting out uh, more YouTube videos again. So if you want to check that out, just go youtube.com backslash Sean Bell and you'll find my channel. And I've just, uh, I've just also put the link up here in the, uh, the live uh, broadcast here on the feed on my page. Oh, thank um, you. 
Okay, so uh, two final questions for you here as, as we, we keep an eye on the clock. Um, Sean, how do you know it's been a successful day for you? That's a great question. I feel like I've been successful when I've done all the things that I normally do and talk to enough people. So if I go through a day and I haven't talked to anybody or I haven't done anything in social media, that's where I feel like I kind of, I don't like to call it wasting a day, but it, it's kind of like, I, Hey, I kind of missed out on an opportunity there. There was another day where I could have been doing something and I get it. We all have those types of days, but yeah, I know for most realtors, they're like, Oh, if I make a sale, that's a good day. Well, yeah, that's, that is a good day. But to me, it's, you're always building and you're always doing things behind the scenes to get those sales to come through. I find a lot of realtors, I call it like the roller coaster effect where it's like you kind of work hard and you're talking to people and all of a sudden you make some sales and you're way up here. And then when you're making those sales, you weren't talking to anybody again. And then all of a sudden you started to go down here and then you start talking to people and now sales are happening again. Whereas I like to have a plan so that I'm always talking to people so that I've got just this all the time. Like my months are consistent with sales because I'm always having those conversations on social media. I'm doing interviews with people. So yeah, to me, a perfect uh, successful day is when I've reached out to people I haven't reached to before. I've met new people on social media. I've met a new business owner and done an interview with them for our social media. We've made a social media post. I've posted four to five stories on my Instagram in the day that also feeds to face. If I've done all that, then I'm, then I'm happy because I know my face was out there and I was talking to people and somebody knew about me that day. I like it. I, I, uh, I compare that to sort of the, the hunter versus the order taker. The hunter is always hunting for food, no matter how much he or she is eating. Um, so that's a great one. And, and, uh, you know, again, it sounds to me like you're just, you're focused every day on building a lot of mind share. And I love it. Uh, Sean, where, uh, where can people find Hey, eh? Before you segue into that, if I give one people one tip yeah. to try and, and I do it often with me and I find it works really, really well is I always create a policy for myself for one month is to create and don't consume. So if you can take one month and all you do is create social media for that month and don't look at any other of your social media, you're going to be far better off because a lot of us get sucked into the social media hole where you're looking at everything and you look at the news and you see all the different stuff that's going on and the media likes to focus on negative things. So just... That, that can bring you down. So um, I haven't looked at my Facebook feed since uh, before Christmas time. And it's been working out well for me, but I still put a bunch of stuff on Facebook. So just create, don't consume, and you'll notice that growth happen. You know, it's funny. I was just about to ask you for some last words or tips there, but I think, uh, I think you might have just thrown that out there uh, in terms of uh, what people should be Sorry. doing. I don't know. Did you have anything else you wanted to add on to that just before we, we segue? No, that's basically it. Just keep, get started, be consistent. Um, and the only other one was the, when my social media really started to grow is the moment I stopped giving a crap about what other people thought. And the moment that I did that, everything came into place because I was being myself and that's the audience that, that uh, you know, reacted to me and loved me. They followed me. There are people out there that would think I'm silly and think what I'm doing is stupid. That's fine. Um, generally we wouldn't have had a good relationship with home sales. So they're probably better off with a different realtor. <laughs> I like my tribe. We're going to stick together and we're, we're going to do our thing. So yeah, just be yourself. Don't worry about what others think. It, it, it'll work out for you. Uh, Sean, where can people find you? Where can they go to learn more about the course? Where can they connect with you? If they've got questions for you about any of this stuff, uh, where, where, where do we want to direct people? For sure. So yeah, my YouTube channel, which I think you said you put up there, David, youtube.com back slash Sean Bell. That's all my, uh, a, a ton of videos on there. Um, a lot of it was focused on technology and social media. And now it's going to be more so social media because I found a demand. That's what a lot of realtors want to know is how to post, what to post. And I, I provide that in the YouTube channel. Aside from that, if anybody's interested in the course, I encourage them to book a call with me. They can go to uh, seanbell.ca backslash book a call and that'll give you a form in there where you can see my calendar you can submit to book a call 
I do a, a about a 45 minute interview with you asking you a bunch of questions to see if you even are a fit for the course, because I don't just want, I'm not just going to sell something to somebody if I know they're not a fit, because that's just, that's a waste of money to them. It's a waste of time. It just, um, you need to be a fit for it. Otherwise that makes no sense for me to, to have you a part of that. If I know you're not going to get any value out of it. And then on Instagram, you can go check out what I'm doing on Instagram. I give a lot of tips and advice on there. And that's at C21 Sean Bell. And that's my main goal is to, to for you guys to better your business as realtors. So I'm always giving tips on that Instagram saying, Hey, here's what worked for me, what, what hasn't worked for me. And whether you want to, you know, do exactly the same as I'm doing, I'd be flattered. If you want to do similar photos, go for it. You're to me, you're not stealing it. I'm, I'm happy to share it. Sean, uh, this has been, this has been good. Uh, great information today. I thank you. I know that uh, generating leads on social media um, in our digital world is, uh, is always a hot topic for many people. Um, I've got my two cents about, about generating leads on it. Uh, I think there, there's certainly, uh, there's certainly a right way and there's certainly a wrong way to do it. Um, and today we were able to go through a lot of the right ways, um, you know, again, stepping out of your comfort zone and, and, and the consistency behind your efforts and managing time to get it done and, you know, coming up with contents that you're prepared to execute, um, not worrying about what people think, you know, themes for the month and even for the week, um, getting involved with the community. Uh, and, and, and one of the biggest messages here today is being social, Right organically being engaged and not believing that this is going to be something where if I just dump enough money into it, it's just going to work. Because I think that, you know, if you put all the money in the world, but you don't put the efforts and you don't actually connect with individuals, I still don't see this as the biggest business driver. Um, and unfortunately, I think there's a misconception from our industry that that's, that's as simple as it is. Uh, but there is no magic pill. There is right. no, you know, overnight solution. Things take time, things take effort. Um, and it takes, you know, one day at a time. And, uh, well, today I think we, we, we really, uh, we hit that message home for sure. Uh, and, uh, I just want to thank you very, very much for all your time today and sharing your insights and, uh, look forward to, uh, to continuing the conversation with you, man. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate, uh, I love, I love these, uh, talks. I mean, every time we do one, it's it kind of motivates me more as well. And it, you know, it's always nice to bounce ideas off each other and, uh, and do these interviews. So thank you so much. I appreciate it just as much. You're either listening to this on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. Or maybe you went to my website, Mindshare101.com. And while you're on my site, make sure to download your free copy of the Ultimate Marketing Bundle for Realtors. This is a 31-page ebook packed with a ton of tips and tricks for you. Plus, there's a ready-to-go 90-day social media content calendar to help you build more Mindshare so that you can get more market share. And if you want to talk about personalized one-to-one -one coaching to help you get to your next level, just get in touch with me. We'll set up a free consultation call, learn more about what you're looking to achieve and well, how I will help you do exactly that. Also, don't forget that our Push 100 is on. So please be sure to go to iTunes, subscribe to the show, rate us, and leave a review. And if you haven't yet, connect with me on Facebook at Mindshare101 and on Instagram at David Greenspan101. I want to once again thank Virginia Munden and the Buzz Conference for sponsoring today's episode. Make sure you connect with the Buzz Conference by visiting their website, www.thebuzzconference.com, or by following them on Instagram at The Buzz Conference to keep tabs on all the awesome events they are always hosting. I also want to thank Kids Keep in Touch Systems for also sponsoring today's episode. If you haven't checked us out yet, just go to my website, mindshare101.com, and click on Marketing. This has been another episode of the Mindshare Podcast. Thank you for tuning in.